several years ago, about four, in fact, I, uh, I came to the conviction that I need to put more scripture into my heart. Um, and as we get older, we think our brain cells are leaving us and we really can't memorize anymore. But I'm telling you that memorization will help your brain. It helps it get stronger and helps your memory get better. And I decided to be easy on myself and just learn one chapter a year or one chunk of scripture a year. And one of the first ones that I fell in love with was Romans 5. To me, it's one of the most succinct summaries of the gospel story in the Bible, and it just happens to be my favorite. Now, if I ask each of you, if you chose just one chapter of the Bible to tell the gospel story to someone, what would it be? And we'd probably have many different answers here because we're all different people with different experiences. But I love Romans 5. Romans 5 begins with the word, therefore. And I decided that since it began with the word, therefore, after I'd already memorized it, that <clears throat> there was something before that that must be important for that therefore. So I'm actually going to start in chapter 4, verse 20. Now, who out here has the New Living Translation? Great. Right here, third row back, you can be my backup. Because I sometimes get nervous and my brain just, you know, the words just leave me. So um, I learned this from the New Living Translation. It's a beautiful, beautiful message, starting with Romans 4, verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit, too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. It was he who was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing his glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us de develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given the, us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we will st were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. When Adam sinned, Sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given. But it wasn't counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different than the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of that one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace 
and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will triumph over sin and death through that one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. The law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing about it, group. Wonderful cross and the glory that is coming because of it. Strength for all the despair. 
That's what we want you to hear. We belong to God. <laughs> um, I'm Nancy. I sing tenor. And this is my husband, Bill. And I sing, in case you didn't figure it out, bass baritone. <laughs> and I sing alto. I'm Rhonda. Uh, and I was just thinking earlier about a song that we sang. We won't sing today. But um, the first two lines are, um, it matters not where you have been. It matters not what you have done. It, it's just the blood of Jesus that covers our sins. That's not exactly the line, but that's, that kind of tells my story. <laughs> our story. <laughs> I'm also Rhonda. So uh, you can remember that because we're both dressed alike today, so just call each of us Rhonda if you see us afterwards. <laughs> Can't be wrong. Yeah. I sing second soprano, and my husband Dana is at the piano. And uh, we also want to acknowledge Lori Hoke, who's in the back of the sound booth. She's our sound technician. Um, when we bring our own system with us, today we didn't, but it's uh, really good to be here, and uh, we enjoy sharing the gospel of Jesus in song. My name is Bethany. Um, I'm first soprano. This is my first year with the group Homeward, and it's been um, a lot of fun. Uh, my husband is not here today. He sometimes helps with taking pictures for the um, the Homeward Instagram site, um, but he couldn't come today. But it's been really fun being with Homeward. We've been singing together about six years, actually, and beginning of this year, we had two members drop out, and so um, these two joined us, and we're so happy. Amen. But we spent the first half of the year, you know, relearning everything. Um, so we're glad to get back in the, the saddle, so to speak, and be out sharing with people. Um, this next song talks about the weight of the cross. And it wasn't the tree he was carrying, but it was our sins on his heart. Yes. The crowd pressed in to see this man who stood condemned to die. A man they once proclaimed as king, they now would crucify. They laid a cross upon his back and pushed him up the road. The path would lead to Calvary. He fell beneath the Lord. Thank you. 
It's really nice to see here and look at the stained glass window with the sun coming through and Jesus Christ, our Lord, in front. <laughs> Stop. 
It's shouting time in heaven. A sinner once lost is found. It's shouting time in heaven. Salvation has been brought down. No wonder the angels rejoice to know my sins have been covered by the crimson flow, and now I'm feeling fine. I'm walking on the highway with my Lord. My name is written down in the courts of a. It's shouting time in heaven. Oh yes, it's shouting time. Yeah. 
the dead are risen. Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? The Bible tells of a better home where we never more shall roam. Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? We're going to be what you're going to be doing when you hear that trumpet blowing. When the Lord shall come and take his children home. We'll be lost. We'll be crying. Be among the living or the dying. When the Lord shall come and take his children home. has prepared a way are you ready for that day don't you want to go home don't you want to go home don't you want to go home get on your knees while there's still time or you'll find you've been left behind don't you want to go home don't you want to go home don't you want to go home we're gonna be what you're gonna be doing when you hear that trumpet blow What you're gonna be doing when you hear that trumpet blowing when the Lord shall come and take his children home. We be lost, we be crying, be among the living or the dying when the Lord shall come and take his children home. His children home. Boy, I feel like we need to grease our lips for some of these songs. They just go so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you understood every word. <laughs> oh, what a day that's going to be. Let the joy begin. Let our songs ring out. Only great. 
What a day that's going to be. I can hardly wait. Would you join me for the benediction? Please stand as we have close our service. Our Heavenly Father, it has been good to be here this morning with brothers and sisters who are looking forward to the coming of our Lord. Amen. What a day that's going to be, Lord. We are so excited and want that to happen immediately. <laughs> but we will be patient, Lord. We will be patient. Lord, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to come and share this music with uh, these brothers and sisters. I want to pray that each one got a blessing, and I, I ask, Lord, that as we enjoy the rest of the Sabbath hours, that your Holy Spirit will live within us and be with us. May this be a special Sabbath day. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>